Today we're going to go over the third and final sneak preview of the upcoming brand new subclasses in Beyond Light, the Hunter Revenant. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, and I'm not doing this as a way to maybe overhype the content, I truly think the new Hunter class is gonna be cracked, and we'll get into why in just a minute. First, let's go over what Bungie's goal was when creating their new Hunter. One of the most important parts of developing Stasis and its accompanying Guardian subclasses has been in defining each of their, quote, fantasies. The Bungie team has spent a great deal of time iterating each subclass, starting with the fantasy that instantly summarizes the experience. For example, the fantasy shorthand for the Warlock Shadebinder was established early on as Ice Wizard. But remember, it's also not really ice, and don't you dare call it that. Kappa. Anyway, from that phrase, anyone could conjure up the image in their mind of what it would be like to play as a stasis-powered warlock in Beyond Light, summoning your staff and unleashing dark energy to freeze opponents. The Hunter Revenant subclass apparently went through many iterations before Bungie all agreed on a ninja archetype. Finally getting into the details, Bungie fills us in on the melee attack, which is called Withering Blade. The player throws a deadly stasis shuriken into the fight. It ricochets off surfaces and enemies, slowing and damaging them along the way. Land two shuriken on the same target and that enemy will be instantly frozen. We need to take a quick time out here. The more we learn about the Hunter, the more that old trailer and pre-release gameplay makes more sense. In the unreleased Gamescom B-roll footage, which again, if you'd like to watch in full and haven't seen, you can find the link down in the video description, or you can click in the top right corner now. There is plenty of the new Hunter Shuriken in both of those clips. One little nugget of info is that apparently the default Shuriken melee comes with two charges, meaning every time we've seen footage of the hunter throwing two shurikens, again, I think that is the default. Bungie mentions that if you tag two shurikens on one enemy, they go from slow to outright frozen, and all the B-roll gameplay seems to show the hunter with two shuriken charges each and every time. I don't like counting my chickens before they hatch, but that is massively strong on paper. Looking at all the gameplay footage, which shows how easily the shuriken bounces around and tracks from one enemy to the other, even without the ability to freeze, I am heavily interested in the fact that not only do the shurikens bounce around corners, but landing even one will damage and slow the enemy down. Do you have any idea how handy that sounds? You're in a PvP gunfight. You know an enemy is in the next room. Ricochet a shuriken off the doorframe into the room, get a tag, now the enemy is slow. With them unable to now outmaneuver you, you simply pop in and gun them down. Easy. There's more I want to talk about too, but for now let's carry on to the Hunter Super Silence and Squall. Again, I was shocked to learn from the B footage that the Super is a one and done shutdown super, kinda like Blade Barrage, not a roaming super like Arc Staff. Named after some weeb sh the super involves a two-pronged attack, with each comma blade having a different function. The first blade, when thrown, immediately detonates on impact, freezing enemies in a radius from the center of the blast. You chuck Squall, aka the second blade, and it'll embed itself in any surface or enemy, then detonate, creating a stasis storm that will track nearby enemies, slowing and damaging them as it makes contact. Going back to the unaired Gamescom footage, it's very clear how the Hunter Super is going to work. You chuck one blade, and you can very quickly see a large dome that represents the you'll be frozen if you're in here zone. It's larger than I thought it would be, and I like it. Then the second blade goes out and boom, follow up damage. I kinda always hated Blade Barrage for how slow the knives are to detonate and how easy it is to botch. With Silence and Squall, I think this will be a far superior shutdown super. Even if you miss a direct hit with your first blade throw, it's still gonna freeze enemies in the zone. Obviously that's great because even with a relative miss, you can still gun down chumps who now might be frozen if they aren't outright killed by blade number two. Moving on, Bungie shows us yet another new aspect and fragment combination. If you don't know what those are, go back and check out my Warlock preview video, which goes into a bit more detail on both aspects and fragments. The new aspect, which is specific to hunters, is called Shatter Dive. Activate while mid-air to quickly descend and shatter nearby enemies on impact. I'm assuming the enemy has got to be already frozen or else, wow, that would be horribly overpowered. We've actually, I'm pretty sure, seen this hunter move in action a few times in gameplay footage 
and the original Stasis gameplay trailer. The Hunter does his little dive down ground pound move, pretty sure we're looking at Shatter Dive. The new fragment, which again are not class specific, is the Whisper of Hedrons. Hedrons? The, the Whisper of whatever. Gain a bonus to weapon damage after freezing a target with Stasis. That is awesome. First, let's think of the very obvious benefit that would bring to PvE. With the ability to throw two shurikens, one to impede movement, the other to freeze, you'd very likely be activating this fragment a lot. And if I'm reading it correctly, it doesn't give you a bonus to weapon damage on that one target you may have froze, it gives you a flat bonus to weapon damage. Meaning, depending on how much damage you're getting, freeze an enemy, boom, instant kill clip on your gun. And considering you can dodge near enemies to recharge your melee with the proper hunter dodge, you can refill your shurikens a ton, freeze more enemies, activate more gun damage, crazy. For PvP, the same great potential is there. It'll probably just be a tad harder than PvE because AI enemies aren't really good at living. Next, we have some kind of new info to me that is really mind-blowing. Descriptions of the brand new stasis grenades. Let's go over each one, starting with the Glacier Grenade. Upon contact with the ground, a wall of stasis crystals immediately will burst out from the earth, and nearby enemies are frozen solid inside a stasis crystal. These grenades have multiple uses, from encasing dudes to creating cover. When destroyed, so I'm guessing you can shoot and break them like a titan barricade, the crystals will create area of effect damage to nearby enemies. Damn. I think that out of all the new nades, the Glacier Nade has by far the most creative potential. Cracked players in both PvP and PvE are going to find ways to use these nades to get higher than they normally should, find new angles, find new ways of ambushing the enemy, finding new ways to get to places that you shouldn't be able to get to. Mark my words, Glacier Nades are going to be wild and produce the largest number of great clips on Twitch and Twitter. Bet on it. Next, we got the Cold Snap Grenade. Upon impact with the ground or an enemy, this nade unleashes a wave of stasis energy that races along the ground in the direction of the closest nearby enemy, freezing them and then searching out the next nearby foe. You can freeze up to three enemies with one cold snap grenade. What the F. I'm thinking that the tracking on this nade has got to be slow as hell, otherwise the cold snap is going to be instantly OP. I'm thinking along the lines of the Void Warlock Axion Bolt. You can blatantly see it coming, you know it's coming right after you, and the play is to run away before it touches you. So even though you may not always be freezing smart enemies by throwing this, the good news is that it's going to force movement. You got a couple guardians camping in a room and refusing to leave? Cold snap time, baby. They're either going to have to run or get frozen solid. And if the tracking time on the nade isn't slow, dear God, I will be rocking cold snap all day. The final new grenade is the Dusk Field. Dusk Field nades create powerful stasis fields that suck enemies into them when forming. Once an enemy is caught inside, they'll be slowed and, if unable to make it out in time, frozen in place. Insane. Now, if the nade only made a zone that slowed down and froze enemies inside, I would understand, but this nade apparently sucks people into it when it forms. Obviously a top-notch PvE choice, but again, for PvP, the biggest question that determines how good the Dusk Field will be is how hard is the suck factor? Now, now, no giggling. Okay, maybe a little bit of giggling. If the suck factor is hella strong, then the dusk field is gonna be absolutely wild. Forcing movement, or if you just flat out trap an enemy in a small room, boom, they are done. I'm pretty sure we saw this nade in action in the original Stasis gameplay trailer on Midtown, and if that is what we're watching, wow, the radius is much larger than I would have hoped. The final thing I wanna talk about is Bungie's mention of a new hunter aspect that they didn't show, but only describe. It allows the Revenant Hunter to temporarily slow down enemies each time they perform a dodge. I'm calling it right now. It all depends on the range. If you can be within, say, Gemini gesture range of your enemy and pull off this dodge, it is going to be insanely OP. Can you imagine for a minute dodging well over 15 meters away from an enemy and bam, they get slowed down through a wall? Mother of God. The hunter dodge, when properly specced into, can be fully charged 
so quickly. I would literally throw on Sixth Coyote or even Dragon Shadow and abuse this like mad. If the range is good and if the slowdown effect truly hinders people in PvP the way I think it will, call me a Hunter main for year four. All the combo potential between the slowdown dodge, the double ricochet shuriken charge, and the crazy new grenades. Again, I'm not trying to be that guy on YouTube who calls something new automatically OP, but man, we really gotta keep an eye on all of this because if everything is as good as it sounds, gonna be wild in Beyond Light. Anyway, that's all the new info we got on the Revenant Hunter, but all in all, plenty of things to sit back and think about. If you're thinking that the Hunter is also looking damn good on paper, let me know down in the comment section. Please like if you enjoyed today's content, and don't forget to subscribe. It's free. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.